Okay, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters tuning in from around the community and, around, and from around the world. My name is Minhaj Hassan. I am your brother from Dar es Salaam community in College Park, Maryland, where we have a adult education, higher education, uh, Islamic uni university project called Tuba University. And through Tuba University, we give seminars such as uh, the seminar today, which is Hijama Seeking a Cure. We do apologize for the uh, late start. We are supposed to start at 11 o'clock, but due to some technical difficulties, we're starting at 12. So without further ado, I'm just going to put some uh, general ground rules, inshallah, and then um, uh, introduce our uh, beloved brother, who is our uh, guest speaker today. And then we'll start, inshallah. So uh, a couple of things. This is a webinar, so um, you are not able to uh, speak or uh, use your mic. But uh, we do want your uh, questions and your feedback, inshallah. So you can use the chat feature or the question and answer feature uh, to uh, ask your questions. Uh, either uh, is fine and I'll be monitoring the chat for the questions. Inshallah, we will try and, and answer some of the questions as they come along and we'll also try and uh, uh, have some time at the end for uh, the questions. Um, getting into uh, and also the webinar is being recorded is being recorded inshallah so uh if our moderator could please make sure uh, the recording button is going on and then we'll be uploading this video to youtube to uh spread it far and wide inshallah so uh brothers and sisters getting into this amazing topic of hijama which is a prophetic sunnah the prophet sallam, a cure not very well known to the muslims especially in the west but alhamdulillah, today we have our dear brother, Saif Chapman, who is going to be talking about it. Brother Saif Chapman is uh, well known to the area of, uh, or, or well versed in the area of health and body. He is a, a U.S. Marine, mashallah. So that is uh, among the elite of the, 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 the U.S. Armed Forces, and they have to go through rigorous training. Uh, he has a bachelor's in criminal justice and a bachelor's in sociology as well. And currently he is running um, a hijama uh, uh, business or, or, a, or treatment facility in Columbia, Maryland. He is a uh, he holds a certificate, a higher diploma in hijama therapy, which he graduated uh, with distinction. So Alhamdulillah has many years of, uh, of uh, service in, in this field, reviving the sunnah and bringing cure to many, many people. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, brother Saif. For the presentation, Bismillah. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah. Wa salatu salam wa shurakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, the first thing I wanted to tell you about is, is my story, how I came to um, find hijama. Um, I've been a Muslim about 30 years. I, um, you know, studied Islam, especially in the, the first few years when it's very um, new and interesting and, and vibrant. And I, I, I tried to study and learn everything about Islam. Uh, in, in the early years. So I read about hijama. I knew about hijama. I believed in hijama. And then I forgot about hijama. Um, growing up in the West, I was just used to going to the doctor, getting a pill. Uh, and, and that's how I dealt with medicine. I never really thought about being sick. Um, then about six years ago, I got um, plantar fasciitis in, in my right foot. Uh, and I, I did the regular things that, that you do. I, I went to the doctor. I took the, the pain medications that they give me, uh, all of the treatment options that they had. I tried over, over a period of probably about two years, the different balls, um, rollers, ice, all kinds of things. And um, my scenario was, uh, if any, anyone's ever had plantar fasciitis, and I'm sure, I'm sure uh, many people have suffered from this before, it's, it's a debilitating pain. It's, it's a constant pain. You can stretch out the pain for, for some, some period of time, but if you stop moving for 10, 15 minutes, that pain comes back. Um, so I, I tried everything. And, and the last few months that I was going to the doctors, they were just telling me, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, take pain relievers and, and deal with it. And then my wife, alhamdulillah, she said, why don't you try hijama? And I said, you know, I, I was, first of all, I was out of options. So I was, I was looking for any, any, 
uh, chance at, at, at a cure. Um, and, but then I remembered what I, what I read, you know, 20, 25 years, uh, prior about hijama. So I did, uh, a session of hijama, uh, that evening I felt a little bit better, but I didn't really feel cured or anything like that. Uh, the next morning I woke up and, uh, I was completely surprised by the, the results. I would get up in the morning usually. So before doing hijama, um, I would get up, uh, the pain was on my left, uh, my right foot. So I'd get up on my left side. I would tap my toes on the ground. I would tap my heel on the ground. I would rock my, my foot back and forth on the ground, take small steps. It would take me five, five, 10 minutes in the morning just to make it to the bathroom. So the morning after I did one session of hijab, I got up, I tapped my toes on the, the ground and I felt no, no pain. Usually I would feel a sharp pain tingling and would shoot up my leg and it would be very painful. If hijama had done nothing else but just relieve that much of pain, I would have been satisfied with hijama. But I tapped my heel, again, no pain. I rocked my foot back and forth. I started to question whether or not I was sleeping. Is this a dream? I, I couldn't believe that um, I had recovered that much. I took a full step. I went to the bathroom uh, walking normally um, after one session of hijama. And this this caused me to rethink uh, medicine in, in my life. Um, I started thinking about all the things that my grandmother used to do, like ginger, black seed, and stuff like this. Um, I remember when I was a kid getting cold, she would give us um, cod liver oil and, and these terrible tasting medicines and stuff like that. But the next day or the day after that, you wouldn't have a cold anymore. Now we spend weeks with, with a cold, drinking all kinds of um, potions that you, you buy for over the counter. So I was completely blown away by the results um, that I got from hijama. So with that, I wanted to learn everything about it. Uh, I started reading every book I could get on hijama. Um, I started uh, taking every class I could find on, uh, on hijama. And, and I liked it so much, I started doing it on family and friends. And, then, uh, and now I'm, I'm, I'm running a clinic where I continue to do it. So... Um, for, for especially Western uh, Muslims, I think it's, uh, it's kind of hard for us to, to, to see, we see, I saw hijab anyways, as something like that was 1400 years ago, that's 2000 years ago, our medicine has improved over, over the, the, the centuries. Um, but after trying it, I, I just I couldn't believe the, um, the results that I got. Um, and so I just, I, I fell in love with it and I wanted to do it for myself. I wanted to do it for my family. I wanted to do it. I wanted other people also to, um, see the benefit from, from doing hijama. So that's, that's my story. That's how I came to, to learn about hijama, how I came to, uh, how my interest, how I became interested in Islam, uh, in Islam, uh, um, in hijama. Um, and some of the things that we should think about, um, uh, when we think about, uh, hijama is our overall all health. Every single person, uh, doesn't matter, male, female, young, old, we're all going to experience um, illness at some time, sickness at some, some time, and it's not always bad. Illnesses in Islam is, is a, a, a means of expiating sins. Um, Abu Huraira said that the, 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 prophet, the messenger of Islam said, trials will continue to afflict the believing man and the believing woman in themselves, their children, and in their wealth until they meet Allah having no sins. So having some sided sickness and being patient with it can be an exp uh, expiation of, of sins. Um, and uh, afflictions are a sign that Allah wants good for a person. Narrated Abu Huraira an that the Messenger of Allah said, if Allah wants good for a person, he, fl he afflicts them with trials. And that, that includes um, sickness. So when it, when it comes um, to treating uh, sickness, it's, uh, in person, it's, it's, it's important for a person who is afflicted with illness that he should seek a cure for it. Um, you can seek a cure for um, conventional medicine. Um, also, uh, um, there are different ways that the Prophet Sallallahu in the Sunnah, uh, we find that the, the Prophet Sallallahu did things uh, to, for, for health. Um, but it's important to recognize that Allah alone is the one uh, who, who, cure, who cures us. It's not the doctor that we go and see. It's not the pill that he gives us. It's not the copper. It's not hijama. It's Allah Azawajal alone who, who cures us of disease. But when we follow uh, the, the Quran and Sunnah, when we, we follow the, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by doing things um, like hijama, we can find really uh, good and beneficial results from that. 
So there are other medicines other than hijama that, uh, um, that are known in the sunnah, like honey. Um, Abu Sa'id said, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, my brother is suffering from bowel movements. So he said, give him honey to drink. So he gave him honey to drink. And then he came, he came back and said, oh, messenger of Allah, I gave him honey, but it has increased his bowel movements. The messenger of Allah وسلم, said, give him honey to drink. He said, so he gave him honey. Then he came and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed, I gave honey to drink, but it, was, it has increased his bowel movements. He said, so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Allah has told the truth and the stomach of your brother has lied. Give him honey to drink. So he gave him honey to drink and he was cured. And honey right now, um, I think is uh, important just to spend a, a, a minute talking about it, um, uh, is a cure for, for allergies. If you can buy, if you can find some local honey, um, th there's an apiary right here in um, Baltimore County. I used to I used to take three three different types of um, allergy medicines. Uh, I went and bought the the local honey. Started taking lo local honey. I don't I don't take any kind of medication for for allergies anymore. So um, honey not only can it tell you if the issue is with your stomach or not, um, it can also help you with uh, allergies as well. Then we have black seed. Uh, most most of the time we find it in oil, but the seed itself too. Um, Abu, uh, uh, narrated Abu Hurairah an, that the Prophet وسلم, said, make use of this black seed for indeed there's a cure in it from every disease except a sum and a sum is death. Uh, we also have Rukia uh, for things like Lain, the evil eye. Um, we have Kohal, which is good for the eyesight. Um, lot tree leaves, Sadr, um, lot tree leaves are used to relieve symptoms of evil eye magic impotency in men, uh, pain in the body. Um, and some of the scholars recommend using lot tree leaves by placing them in water and reciting verses of Quran over it. Um, you can bathe in it, you can um, drink it. Um, but treatment of illness should initially always be approached holistically. Therefore, a person's way of life, his diet, her diet, nutrition and exercise should all be taken into consideration. Hij uh, hijama therapy alone can help some uh, treat some illnesses, uh, some ailments, but in many cases, hijama therapy needs to be applied in, in conjunction with other remedies or lifestyle changes. So, for example, if someone um, comes here and they're suffering from ta'in or, or jinn, we tell them to go and get rukia first. The, the, the majority of the problem that they're having with whatever they want to do hijama for, um, you know, uh, infertility or whatever. The, the problem is actually from the, from suffering from the jinn or from the, the, the ayin. If they go and remove, remove that first, that's 75% of the problem gone. Then they come and uh, do the hijama and, and, and they can be cured from, from all of it. Some, so those are, those are permissible things to use in, uh, uh, in Islam, hijama, uh, um, we use honey, uh, black seed and stuff like that. And then we stay away from things like pork, intoxicants, and also cauter cauterization or burning with fire. All right. So next, um, just a, a definition of uh, what hijama is. Hijama means, uh, in Arabic, means sucking. Um, and in the English language, it refers to wet cupping. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but the, the naming of uh, uh, dry cupping, uh, um, uh, movie cupping, and, and wet cupping. When, whenever we talk about wet cupping, it's different from the other uh, forms of cupping. And wet cupping is what we're talking about when, when, we, when we say hijama. Um, hijama is a complementary therapy used to treat and prevent illnesses. Uh, it's an ancient therapy that has been practiced for many thousands of years throughout the world. And how it works um, hijama works by, uh, uh, um, first of all, it's a, it's a powerful way of um, promoting the body or, or making the body heal itself. Um, it works by removing stale, stagnant blood and other pathogens through the skin. Um, it is an organic and natural alternative co to conventional medicine. And, but at the same time, hijama can work with uh, conventional medicine too. Um, hijama works by creating negative pressure on the person's skin by using a suction pump and a cup. Uh, in the area applied, thereafter, we make small incisions uh, and uh, on the skin, the cup is reapplied, and then the, the um, toxin is pulled out through the suction. Uh, it works as an effective pain relief, uh, and it removes the stagnant blood from beneath the surface of the skin. And 
depending on how much pressure you can get, it can take, it can bring um, toxins from up to four inches deep in, in, in the body. Uh, it works in the opposite way uh, of massage therapy. So in massage therapy, it's, they're pushing, it's, it's positive pressure and hijama, it's negative pressure. It's, it's pulling away. Um, but when you, when you do moving cupping, it, you have the same, same sensation and the same relief as, as like a deep tissue massage, for example. Uh, hijama is not painful. The strongest vacuum feels like a small pinch. The scratches are, are, are very minor. It's like you take two ply of toilet paper and I scratch just through one ply. Um, so you can feel the scratch, but it's, it's not painful. It's not painful at all. Um, the history of cupping, cupping has been around uh, as a remedial therapy for thousands of years. Um, its origin is China. Um, before the invention of antibodies, uh, wet cupping was well known and widely practiced in the Mediterranean and uh, Eastern Europe up until the early 1900s uh, when it fell out of, um, out of use. The ancient Egyptians were the first to systemize the use of cupping. Uh, there are Egyptian documents that describe the press process of wet cupping uh, as a way to remove foreign matter from the body. And the Egyptians introduced uh, hijam or cupping to, to Greece uh, who then went on and, and started using it for nearly every uh, ailment, ailment. Cupping techniques and methods have varied and evolved over the ages and continents. Uh, when hijam was legislated as a, a recommended means for cure in Islam, it came with its own set of rules. So even though um, uh, cupping has been around for, for before the Prophet uh, it was in China, for, for years before uh, um, the, the, the Prophet of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when, when cupping came to Islam, it, it, had, it began to have its own uh, rules. It became something similar to cupping, but, but, but very different. Um, so it became a therapy surrounded by the rules and regulations that are particular to, to Islam alone. Thus, uh, hijama therapy is a face-based therapy and it's governed by Islamic laws. Um, the, the instruments, the things that we use for cupping now are, are plastic or, or glass cups, but in the past they used animal horns, they used bamboo, um, uh, they use clay. Um, plastic cups, they don't break as easily and the pump mechanism allows uh, to get the required amount of vacuum. So in other things um, you can use, some people like to use fire, um, it, it's, it's, it's presentation is very nice, but you can't control the amount of pressure. You can't do less or more. You burn the oxygen out of it. You put the cup on the person and it's, that's what it's going to be. But with a, a, um, a handheld pump, I can put one pump of pressure, five pumps of pressure, whatever the person wants. So over the years, um, the, uh, um, the tools that we use have, have gotten better, but the hijama has, has, has stayed the same. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there, there are three types of, of hijama. Um, the, first, the first one is dry cupping, the second uh, uh, moving cupping, and then um, wet cupping or hijama. Um, when, when we say dry cupping, um, the word is synonymous with, with uh, Chinese cupping. So a lot of, there's a lot of places here that do uh, cupping or Chinese cupping. What, what they mean is they do dry cupping. Dry cupping is great. Uh, it's very helpful. It um, helps with uh, increased blood circulation. It's a natural pain reliever, uh, can remove congestion. Uh, um, it does, it do, does a lot of things. Um, but it's, if, if you compare uh, dry cupping to hijama, it's like uh, hijama is like cupping 2.0. Um, so where dry cupping, you bring the toxins to the surface of the skin and then you take the cup off. And then over the next days and weeks, um, the toxins are removed. Um, wet cupping is different. We bring the toxins to the surface of the skin, small scratches and take all the toxins immediately out of the body. So they don't stay there for days and weeks. And, um, and you, you can get everything, all of the toxins out of the, the area. Um, any, any type of cupping, if it's dry cupping, movie cupping or wet cupping, there's, there are levels, there's weak pressure, there's medium pressure, strong pressure. 
uh, an example. Uh, and then there are also different people that you can use the treatment on and people that you can't use use on. So on um, for dry cupping, for example, you can do high uh, um, uh, strong pressure on someone 16 or older, but, but, but children that are younger than that, you, would, you could only use like um, a weak pressure, like uh, a light pressure. Um, so some of the, um, um, the effects or the side effects uh, of dry cupping are things like tiredness and deep discoloration for, for a couple of days, um, but, that, but that's it. Um, moving cupping. Moving cupping is uh, the equivalent to a, a deep tissue massage, but uh, in, instead of um, using the, the palm of the hand and, and the thumbs to, to make the pressure, we're using suction. I take um, uh, black seed oil, olive oil, I, uh, I put it on the, on the skin and move a cup back and forth. And because I have a pump, I can adjust the amount of pressure uh, where it's a little bit harder with the hands and the thumb. So I can do a deep tissue um, massage as deep as the person wants, as deep as a, a deep tissue massage does it, or I can do it lighter. I have some, I have some level of control uh, when it comes to the amount of uh, pressure. It's a great way to stimulate blood circulation. It helps loosen stiff muscles, um, relieve pain. It's therapeutic. It's relaxing. Um, uh, what else? Let's let's, uh, let's 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 go on to wet cupping. So. Wet cupping is, is um, hijama. Hey so uh, anytime someone says wet cupping and it's different, it's not bloodletting. We don't, we don't take blood out of the, the veins. Um, like I said, it's just small scratches uh, on the surface of the skin um, that takes the toxins out of the, whatever we're working on, if it's a, a, an, an organ, uh, you know, kidneys, uh, upper respiratory, it'll take the toxin out of that area. It's a process whereby a cup is placed on the skin using a suction pump. Uh, it creates a vacuum between the skin and the cup. The cup is then removed and small incisions are made on the skin. And then the cup is reapplied. Uh, this process allows for the stagnant blood to drain into the cup. Um, some of the advantages of wet cupping are there's a reward for reviving the son of the prophesy to them. Um, it increases blood circulation like the other two, uh, boosts the immune system. Uh, it's a natural pain relief. It relieves pain and pressure, removes the uh, impurities and toxins from the body. Um, it can remove also inflammation from the joints. Uh, it stimulates the organs and it works deeper than uh, a regular massage or acupuncture. And wet cupping, there, there are treatments for, for nearly, nearly every disease uh, or ailment you could think of. Uh, migraines, asthma, for, you know, infertility, arthritis, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, um, uh, just about everything you can, you could think of, um, uh, you know, hair loss, everything you could think of, uh, uh, there, there's a treatment um, for, uh, for, for hijama for that. Brother Saif, uh, can you, can you just very briefly tell our, our viewers what they are exactly seeing on the screen uh, with the wet cupping picture. Okay, so this is there. There, um, this is the one of the main sudden points. Um, this is a cup, and it's it's filled up with blood now. So be, before be, uh, we we let it fill up about uh, four or five milli, uh, millimeters uh, uh, millimeters of of, um, of fluid, so of blood, and then we will put um, and and I'll, I'll have a video here next. Uh, that will show you exactly what it looks like when it comes out. We'll put like tissue around that and, and that will remove uh, the blood. So this is, this is what we're doing. We, we, every wet cup starts with the dry cup. So um, uh, you, you do, you put a wet, uh, dry cup on there. You leave it for a few minutes. Uh, it builds up the pressure. It, it brings the toxins to the surface. So here we've already scratched the skin. The, the blood and the toxin has started to come out. Um, this is about time now that we'll, we'll put some tissue around it, take this blood out and then reapply it, uh, until we, until we get to, to plasma. And I'll, I'll show some pictures of that too, uh, later. So actually, if we can, if we can go to the video, um, in Hedge, and if you can mute it and I'll just, um, don't even worry about these. Uh, I think, um, yeah, you can, these are just the, the things that we use here in the, in the clinic, um, Yeah, a little further. 
Perfect. So if you play the video, yeah, and um, this is my wife. She did uh, hijab mommy yesterday, uh, so we could just show you all three different types. If yeah, if you mute it, then I'll just talk over it. The first thing she's doing here is she's getting a, a alcohol swab. She's going to clean the area uh, where she's going to apply the the first cup. Um, so we disinfect the, the area. Uh, now she'll now she'll get a cup and, um, and and put it on. This is these are the, the two main the primary center points uh, right here over the T seven. She'll apply a cup. Um, get as much pressure as you can. Some people can't take a lot of pressure. That's fine. But the more pressure you can get, um, the, the 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 deeper it will pull toxins from. Uh, now she's going to do underneath the scapula. Uh, will be the the yeah the, the second uh, primary center point. All right, so like I said, some people it, um, can can only take like one pump, and that will pull toxins from about a, an inch deep. Uh, four or five pumps, you can get you can get toxins from 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 four inches deep. So out of the lungs, out of the, out of the heart, out of the kidneys, out of the liver, um, out of the muscle, uric acid and stuff like that. Okay. Now she's going to demonstrate, uh, movie cupping. So she's going to, she's going to spray some, uh, a mixture of black seed oil and olive oil on the lower back here. This will allow the cup to, to, um, to move uh, freely. And she's as she's doing as she tapping. She's asking me how you know. Uh, she's asking me how do the cups feel and stuff like that, uh, inquiring how I'm, how how it feels. Uh, and then she start with like a light pressure, and just move the cup around. And this just gives the sensation of uh, the same sensation if someone gave you a black back massage with thumbs and fingers, um, but just a little bit easier for us to control the the um, the level of pressure. Uh, when you see the redness, we know that there's some some inflammation there. I, I, I was having some some back pain, um, so that's why she did my my lower back. Uh, so I don't know, Minhaj, if you can uh, maybe f uh, forward a little bit to where um, she start she takes the blood out. I don't think we need to watch this uh, too much. Okay, that's the beginning. Uh, you can keep going. You can keep going. Go. So she's, she spent like, so, okay. So now she's going to scratch. She took the cup off. She's going to do some little scratches. You can, you can barely feel it. All right. Now she'll reapply the, the cup. All right. Reapply the cup and then we'll see what happens. See if we can get some some toxin. Usually, uh, a lot of times, the first pump, the 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 blood will come out. Um, uh, scratches. You can depending on the size of the area. Um, you can you can do as few as many. You, you don't want to do more than twenty one scratches. So on a, a big area like this, you, she she could do like eleven, fifteen, something like that. Uh, but try to we try to do as as few as possible but get all the toxins out so some people if they bleed really easily we can do five or six or seven um if they don't bleed very easily then then we do more i think she did maybe like 11 or so on on me here um i, I do it often so i don't get a lot of toxin um because i i usually do it every month um but i, I think i think we'll be able to see a, a little bit of toxin um The, de the depth of the scratch, like I said, if you took uh, two plies of toilet paper, you would scratch through one. You wouldn't. You wouldn't touch the second uh, ply. So you're, you're you're not going through the dermis. You're not you're not going through the layers of the skin. It, they really are scratches. And when you feel it, uh, it'll feel just like a little. You, you'll you'll barely feel it. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, um, if if people are doing if some people who are doing hijama wrong, they're doing like deep cuts like that. If you if you have if you can see the cut, you know you know, six months, a year, five years later, I have, I have people that come in and, and have it done in, in other countries. 
Um, and they've had it done five years ago and you can still see the, the they're actually, uh, I, I don't know what they're using. They're not, I'm using a surgical um, scalpel so I can do very, very fine scratches, but it really should just be a scratch. It shouldn't be a, a cut. It should, should not be deep. Um, so maybe if you can, um, forward, f f fast forward a little bit, uh, Minhaj, a bit, uh, we can, if we can see her taking the blood out, keep going, keep going. Oh, we went, I think we went backwards. Okay. Uh, so just a little bit before this, when she, when she took it out. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. So now it's, it's filled up there's a few mill millimeters of, of, um, blood in there so she remove the cup now i'm not sure if she can sh if she shows the camera or not the uh all right okay uh maybe fast forward a little bit when she takes uh takes it off again i think she takes it off a second time and shows a picture of what the uh what the toxin looks like so she reason. So now um, we can reapply the cup up to seven times, just depending on how much um, uh, toxin is coming out. Um, what at this point, what we're looking for is getting the toxin out, and when the toxin is completely out, then we'll see we'll see plasma. Um, so not much going on with my neck there. Uh, you can keep going um, a little bit. So basically, there there's layers when when we start cupping. We'll, we'll see first wet blood, then we'll see toxin, and then last we'll see plasma. When we start seeing plasma, and plasma looks like, um, like a brown sweat, a, a dark colored, uh, a dark colored, almost like water, watery sweat. When we see that, we know we've got all the toxin out of that area. It's not always possible to get to plasma and get all of the toxins out, but that's, that's the goal when we're um, doing. Is this the second pull or is this, this, is this the, same, the first, same as the first one? Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay, okay. Okay, well, we, I, I have some pictures anyway. So let me, let me um, try and get some of this in because I really want to do these um, hadith. So uh, what, what she's going to do, you, you can stop the video. What, what she's going to do from here, she's going to continue doing the cups until there is no more, um, no more toxin. And I'll, I'll try to show you guys a good picture of what the toxin looks like when it comes out. Um, it's amazing that we could do little scratches on, on a person's skin and meat will come out. So, uh, normally, um, th there's like little strands. It looks like strands of, 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 um, of thick material that that's the toxin. Sometimes they come out the, the size of a finger though. Um, I had, I had a client yesterday, hadn't done uh, hijama for a while, had an injury to the shoulder and it, it looks like the texture of uncooked liver. Um, and so it's, it's pretty amazing that, uh, that that's just sitting in the body. It's just dead, stagnant blood, uh, things like uric acid and, and metals and, and other toxins that are in the body, uh, removing those, uh, toxins out of the body. It, it makes the pathway free and promotes, um, health. So, uh, let me just, uh, yeah, cup in relation to this. I'm good. Um, uh, Prophet Muhammad had, um, hijama performed on him. And he was informed of its effectiveness as a remedy by the angels during the night journey. Um, it's wet cupping, it's hijama that has a relation to Islam. Uh, it's one of the remedy, remedies from the sunnah of the Prophet Um, It's also the best form of cupping. Like I said, if you wanted to call it something, it would be like cupping 2.0. Um, no doubt dry cupping is, is, is good. No doubt um, acupuncture is good. No doubt all these things are helpful to the body. But um, hijama is just uh, a different uh, level. Uh, some people, they, they don't, don't like blood. They don't want to have the scratches. So cupping, dry cupping is, is better than anything, better, or better than nothing. So it, it's, it's helpful. But it's, if you really want the full benefit uh, of a cupping experience, then it's, it's hijama that you want to do. Um, here's a couple of um, hadith about uh, hijama. Uh, actually, let me use this. Narad Anas Ibn Malik, an, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, I did not pass by an assembly of angels on the night that I was taken on the night journey, except that they said, Oh, Muhammad, order your nation with cupping as a, as a treatment. Uh, Narad Jabir, 
radiallahu anhu, when he returned to Muqa'na, he said, I will not leave until you treat yourself with cupping. For indeed, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying, indeed, there is a cure for it in cupping. Uh, also narrated Anas ibn Malik, an, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whoever wants to be treated with cupping, let him search for it on the 17th or the 19th or the 21st. And do not let your blood become um, hyper I mean, uh, so that it kills you. Uh, and I can give you, if anyone's interested, I can give you where it is in Bukhari and Muslim stuff like that. Um, another one, uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu an said that the Messenger of Allah said, whoever gets treated with cupping on 17th and the 19th and the 21st will be cured from, from every disease. Um, so you can also do cupping while fasting. Um, it doesn't uh, invalidate the fasting. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said the Prophet وسلم, was treated with cupping while he was fasting. Um, in, in Ramadan though, I asked, I asked people to, to wait just because, uh, if they were new to hijama, not, not to do it because there is the chance that you become, um, you can get a little bit faint or, 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 um, or dizzy. Uh, yeah. So those are, I'll talk about that in a second, those dates. Um, so I, I uh, and when someone gets a little dizziness, I, I have honey waiting for them and that would invalidate your fast. So if, if, if someone's just doing uh, nawafil fasting Mondays and Thursdays, and if they've done cupping and, and they're used to cupping, no problem. You, you probably won't have any issue. But uh, during Ramadan, because the days are so important, um, just ask people to accept an emergency. Just wait until after Ramadan. Uh, get your fasting in and not have to worry about. I've only seen someone get Disney uh, uh, twice in, in the hundreds of, of sessions that I've done. Um, yeah, so the, the 17th, the 19th, and 21st, those are the days of the Islamic month. So today. So after this presentation, the rest of the day, it's, it's going to be packed in here um, because uh, it's, it's such a powerful day. I did my foot uh, on, on one of those, those Sunday days, and I've never, I've never again, it's been uh, four years, I think, since I, since I uh, well, more than four years since I did the hijama on my foot, and um, I've never had an issue with it. So it's... Um, like I said, it's not the doctor that you go and see or the medicine uh, that's going to cure you of, um, of the disease. Uh, if, we, if we believe that Allah is going to cure us, uh, and then we go and do the follow the son of the Prophet, I, I found really, really good results in that. Um, cupping also, uh, you can do in the state of uh, Ihram, uh, narrated Ibn Abbas, an, that the Prophet was treated by cupping while he was in a state of uh, ihram. Um, and then there are, there are some cupping points, and we're going to look at this in a second, but um, cupping points that are, are in the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Married Anas, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to get treated with cupping on the two juggler veins and the upper part of the back. He used to get treated with cupping on the 17th, the 19th, and 21st. Um, Married Jabir, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fell off from his horse onto a a trunk of a tree, so his foot became dislocated. Waqir said, uh, meaning that the Prophet ﷺ was treated with cupping on it because of contusion. And narrated Jabir an, that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was treated with cupping on his hip because of a sprained or a bruise that he suffered from. Um, and there's some more, but uh, can you show those, those? Those, yeah. So these are the primary Sunnah points on the on the T7 and right underneath the scapula. These are the ones that when, whenever the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was treated with hijama, he, he hit these two points. Their, their general health, um, for general health, and in many different treatments like um, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, uh, cir blood circulation, stuff like this, these two points will, will be part of, uh, of that treatment. Um, so these are two points that are recommended whenever you do hijama to do these two. Uh, the next one is, uh, secondary, the next picture, yes, secondary. These are the two where, uh, the hadith talking about the juggler vein. Um, so on the side of that, and, and some people are scared about those cause it's a juggler, but like I said, it's very, very fine scratches, uh, directly on the spine. Uh, you, you can do it over, over the spine. Like, so number the one that the picture we have before, like I said, you're, you're not getting anywhere near to, to the spine. You're not, you're not going through the layers of, of, of dermis. 
all you're all you're doing is scratching the very very surface uh, of the skin, uh, so you're you're getting nowhere near uh, um, like this the spine or the spinal cord or anything like that. On top of the head, very good for for headaches, very good for um, for memory. Uh, the next, so that's the secondary sunda points, and then the last one is uh, uh, these are this is actually the optional. It's not secondary. These are optional sunda points. Um, this is like so. For example, the foot, the feet when the Prophet says them fell off the horse, uh, the hips. When he when he hurt his hips, um, so these ones they're not like general health or anything like that. But because the Prophet ﷺ did those points, some people like to do them. They, they are sunnah points. Um, but uh, so for example, uh, the the two on the foot, we did those two when when I, uh, we did those on uh, our uh, on one side of my right foot when I had the plantar fasciitis. So one of the points we did when I had an injury to the foot. We we definitely, or if someone has an injury to the hips, we definitely hit the the point or the the sunnah point. Um, so pri uh, primary, the, the ones that the Prophet them always did. Secondary, uh, he sometimes did them, and uh, um, then these ones here, the optional, actually from a from an injury. And we can we can go now to the next one, preferred times. Okay, so. There are, uh, we talked a little bit, I talked a little bit uh, uh, earlier, the 17th and 19th, 21st. Um, there, there are plenty of uh, hadith out there in Bukhari, Muslim, uh, um, Majah, uh, Sunna, uh, um, all, all, everywhere you can find these. Um, but in general, they're the best time of the year for, for hijama is the summer months. This is the, the, the uh, reason that the blood's closer to the surface. So summer months are better than winter months. The best days of the uh, the best days of the month, or that's the best days of the year. The best days of the month then are the 17th, 19th, and 21st of the Islamic calendar of the Hijri camera, ca calendar. Not it just happens that this month the Hijri calendar and the Gregorian calendar they they're um, equivalent. Um, the best days of the week, Monday and Thursdays, just like uh, fasting days, uh, um, um, intermittent fasting days, uh, and then the best time of the day is between Fajr. And Aisha, uh, uh, Fajr and Maghrib. Sorry. Um, frequency: the frequency of uh, wet cupping. Um, it, it depends on the illness of the patient, uh, the person, uh, the person's age. But as a general rule, cupping should be performed once a month on he healthy young uh, people, if not at least once a year, uh, at, or at least once in a lifetime. So. Um, Depending on what my clients are, are, are doing, like athletes, um, they, they do it every month. Uh, you can, uh, some people could come in and, and we'll see like there's not very much toxin. We'll say, you know, try it in six months or try it again in a year. Um, but uh, if they come in and there's a lot of toxins, usually they come back in a month and then there's less toxin. They come in the back and then there's half the toxin. They come back in a month and there's no toxin. So uh, it depends on the person, it depends how long. They've been dealing with the ailment. Um, the pill depends how long they've been, you know, had high blood pressure or whatever. Uh, high blood pressure, though, is a is a good example of um, treating uh, uh, of treatment that's different from conventional medicine. Um, well, conventional medicine, you go to the doctor, you have high blood pressure, he gives you a pill, instantly it's controlled now, but it hasn't. It, it, it's controlled the sim symptoms. It hasn't fixed the actual problem. It doesn't look for the root cause of the problem. Um, but we're happy with that. We take a pill, we're done, we don't have to do anything. Who knows what that pill does to other parts of our body, uh, what it damages. Hijama is uh, sometimes not that quick. Sometimes you can have plantar fasciitis and do one uh, session and you can be done with it. But usually with um, what we see with uh, high blood pressure is they'll come with uh, on a full dose of medication and there'll be, there'll be uh, a high blood pressure of 200. They'll do a session of uh, uh, um, hijama, they'll go down to 185. They'll do a month later, they'll go down to 170. A month later, they'll go down to 155. They'll go to the doctor and the doctor say, hey, that's pretty good. And they'll reduce their medication, but they'll go back up. And then you do session, 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 and they get off the medication. They go back up, session, session, session. So it can take months, it could take a year, but they actually treat the, 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 the underlying cause of the problem and they cure the underlying cause of the problem and they don't need a the pill. But it's hard for people to see benefit in that when they can just take a pill and then the problem is gone. Um, so, so that's the difference between the conventional medicine and, um, and hijama. 
Hijama is looking for the source of the problem, is treating the actual problem, and and uh, uh, not so with uh, uh, conventional medicine. Uh, a lot of times now, I'm in a clinic with a, a, a really great Muslim doctor. Um, she's she's MD, but she's she's treating people now um, holistically. Uh, she's just seeing that um, you know treating just the symptoms is not is not really actually helping the person. So she's she's doing more um, alternative medicine now. Um, Okay, so we only have a few minutes. Uh, preparation for treatment. Um, okay, let's do that. Um, so there's some things that you th should think about uh, before a hijama, a session of hijama. Um, you want to uh, you want to do like how? Here we go. Household chores. Cover any if if you have any cuts. Um, if you're going to um, do cupping on the head, uh, it's hard with hair. Uh, sometimes if you go without a shower for three or four days, I mean, without washing the hair for three or four days, it'll get oily. I can uh, put like honey on there. I can put like black seed oil and we can get, um, we can get some, some, we can get some, uh, toxin out there. It works really well. Like, uh, someone comes back to the hedge and you put it, you put it on the top of the head, uh, the places on top of the head. Um, there are places on the body where you, where you can't do the prominence on the back of the head. It's forbidden for us to cup there because it can harm somebody. So um, you really have to know where the points are or where you can do it. Um, what else is there for pre? Uh, uh, so you want to, because you're gonna take 24 hours off and rest after hijama for, for best results, um, you, you take 24 hours off. So you wanna do all the things that you, um, uh, like all the work that you can do be, before then. So you don't have to do anything after that. Take a bath before, if you can fast from the night before, that's the best. If you can't, then an hour or two before it's good. Um, you want to bring a chaperone. If it's the first time you're doing it, just in case you're dizzy, you want somebody to, um, to drive you, uh, loose clothing, comfortable clothing, um, all, all important. Um, some, some, um, let me see. Yeah. Okay. What do you have now? After hijama. Okay. Yeah. After hijama. So the scratches, they're micro, they're, they're micro trauma. It, it tells the brain something is happening in this area. So we want the brain to send all the fresh blood to those areas. So for a day and, and when it comes to uh, red meat and, and um, dairy products, we stay away from the two, two days, but for one day, we stay away from taking a shower because of the hot water. It brings the, the blood to the surface. Uh, marital relations, we stay away from that for 24 hours. Um, any like heavy lifting exercise, we stay away from that for, for um, 24 hours. That allows all of the, it, it doesn't uh, invalidate someone's hijama if they do those things, but they just don't get the, the same results. Um, where, you know, when we have stagnant blood uh, in, in an area, like I did my, my uh, I've had pain in my elbows uh, this last couple of weeks. Um, so the, the blood fight, fights, uh, uh, fights the, um, fights the injury, but then it dies. It becomes stagnant. It just stays there and it blocks the pathway. When we put a cup on that and take that stagnant blood out, it signals to the brain, Hey, something's going on here. Uh, I'm, I haven't finished my job. It sends fresh blood there that has oxygen and nutrients and it promotes the healing. So, um, the recovery process and uh, uh, speed is increased, uh, and, and, and then, uh, the healing as well. So, so those are some of the things to think about um, after hijama. Also, the, the small um, scratches, uh, you can put um, olive oil on it uh, or black seed oil on it, a mixture of that. Uh, when they start to heal, they, they can um, feel like itchy. They can feel scratchy a little bit. But if I put it on uh, clients before they leave, I tell them put it on before they go to bed and the next day they don't, they don't feel it. Um, may, maybe one time the second day, but then it's gone. Uh, the discoloration on the skin can stay for a couple of days, depending on the, um, this, the skin tone of the, the person. Um, but basically no pain, uh, administrating hijama. Okay. Let's, 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 let's skip this one and, and go to just some of the pictures. Uh, I can show you hopefully, um, like what some of the toxins look, this is uh, full body daily tox. This is what the, the, the um, discoloration looks like after a session. You can keep going, uh, keep going. We've seen that. Um, you can see it a little bit thicker here. Keep going. All right, same thing, keep going. All right, so see, 
when it gets dark like this, so you can see that there's, he has a, 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 a pale colored skin. I put just a couple, this is just dry cupping and you see how purple is almost black it means there's a lot of toxins there. So when we scratch this one, we're going to get a lot of like meaty some substance out of that. All right, keep going. All right, keep going. On the legs, we do it for here's for the knees. We're doing it for the knees from the back. Keep going. Keep going. We looked at that one. Uh, thick again. Keep going. I'm looking for, here we go. This is what plasma looks like. So after um, we're able to get all of the uh, uh, toxin out, so the pictures you saw before that, the red, dark, uh, dark red blood coming out, the, the meaty substance, the last thing that will come out is this plasma here. It kind of looks like sweat. When, when we get this coming out, we, we stop because we know 100% everything has come out. Uh, and so this, we want to, we want to find this, we want to find this on, on every, every single client. This is what we're looking for every time that we do it. Um, so that's what, that, that's good for the, for the pictures. Um, I was going to do a review, but I think, uh, if we just take questions, uh, if we can do that, Minhaj, uh, I can ask, answer any more questions for the next five minutes, maybe. Okay. Inshallah. So we'll ask everyone to put your questions in the chat. We do have a couple of questions. Um, uh, can children do hijama? Um, it depends how old they are. Um, not, not, not wet cupping. Uh, you should, you should wait till they're older for wet cupping, but you can like, if they, if they hurt themselves or fall something, you can put very light pressure. You can do like moving cupping, very light pressure, but on, on, on children, uh, under 16, under 18, we're not doing, we're not doing, um, wet cupping on. So okay. we'll wait, we'll wait till they're like 18. Uh, otherwise, uh, um, Otherwise, you can like start uh, if, if a child wants to do it at like 10 years old, seven years old, you can you can do moving cupping on them, uh, see how they do with it. And then, you know, a couple months later, maybe do a little bit more pressure. But but with children, you want to be uh, you want to be careful. Their their immune system is, is so strong. You know, they can they can uh, they can recuperate from things a lot faster than than, than we can. So um, not there's not as much benefit in, in doing hijama on a child and, and, um, yeah. Okay. Here's another question. Um, doctors found no problems on my knee, uh, in the x-ray and the CT scan, but I have knee pain. Can I do cupping on my knees for knee pain? Yeah. So you, you can do cupping on your knees, but it, they might not have found any injury, uh, but they're not, they're not looking for toxin. So it could be that you just have a buildup of toxin in the knees and you can remove the toxin from the knees and that will free everything up. But it also might not be, the injury might not be to your knee. Sometimes when we hurt our back, um, it can cause knee pain, it can cause feet pain. Um, so if you're 100% sure that it's not your back or anything else, and it's, it's just, um, you did something to your knee that they're, they're like, you didn't break a bone, you didn't tear any ligament, the ACL, MCL, all those things are fine. Then most likely you just have a buildup of toxins in there. And when you remove that, then the pathway becomes clear and, and you, you're able to, we, we have plenty of people that come, um, an example we were talking about yesterday was not being able to pray uh, in and they do hijama and, and it removes that pain and they're able to, to, to go back to the, to the night prayer. So in an x-ray or a CAT scan or a MRI, you're not going to see, they're not looking for um, the toxin in, 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 in the body. So removing that, it could, it could definitely uh, benefit you. Okay, question. Do you recommend hijama for people with anemia? A anemia, if your blood is at a certain count. Uh, uh, so you can't do it when your blood count is low. Um, so you have to be um, at least eight, but preferably at 10. Um, and below that, then you, sh you, should not, you, should not do, uh, you should not do hijama. You should not do the uh, scratches. Okay. Now these two issues that you mentioned, hijama uh, for diabetes and hijama for high blood pressure, can you go into a little bit of uh, like what happens with the body in those two cases and why and how does hijama help the blood pressure and how does hijama help the diabetes? Uh, okay. So, so for diabetes, both, both are the same, uh, um, I guess, mental, the same system. So your body, what, whatever's going on with your body, it, it's, it's getting blocked. So um, acupuncture, for example, people know about acupuncture. There's, there's waypoints in the body. Well, they, they got those um, points from, from cupping. 
uh, not only are we hitting the, 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 the waypoints in cupping, but we're moving what's stagnant in there. So when we have stagnant uh, blood in, in the body and we block those pathways, whether it's, I'm diabetic. Um, I haven't done a hijab a lot for, for my diabetes because I have knee issues and elbow issues that are uh, more pressing for me. So I, I do, I have, I tore my meniscus in my right knee, um, but I like to exercise. So I do my, I do my knees every month. I do my elbows every month because I want to do those things. So I haven't spent a lot of time on, on, um, my diabetes. But when I, when I do do, uh, have, uh, um, cupping done for my diabetes, it brings my blood sugar lo- levels down, but it also allows me to use less, um, insulin and using less insulin means I can get better control as well too. I don't have as many, uh, lows, the low blood sugars when I'm using less insulin, the more insulin you use, it's, it's harder to, to manage the diabetes. So what, what it's doing is it's opening the waypoints. So there's points on our body when they get blocked, they cause us these issues. When we open those waypoints, when we take out the dead stagnant blood, then those, those, those points are, uh, those problems are relieved. Sometimes if we've had diabetes for a long time, 25 years, 30, 30 years, it, it takes more than one session to do it. Sometimes you have high blood pressure for, for years and years. Sometimes it takes more than, than a session. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can, like I said, plantar fasciitis. You can do one session. I've had people come in here. They've had to do it three times. They've had to come for three months before they're uh, completely cured from it. Um, so it, it depends on it. But going back to the very first thing that we said, um, uh, it, it's the cure is not from the cupping. The cure is not from the cupper. The cure is not from pills or doctors or anything like that. When we ask Allah Zawajal to cure us, whatever we're going on, then we do the work, we take the pill, or we, or we do the cupping, or we see the doctor, or we do the exercise, or we change the diet. We do the things that we're supposed to do uh, uh, with adherence to Quran and Sunnah, and this is where we find the, the success. This is where we find the, the cure, um, inshallah. Okay, a couple more questions. Uh, how, uh, what have you seen as far as eczema and other skin disorders and hijama? What have I, have, have, what have I seen? Like, uh, have, have you seen some examples of being very effective for eczema or skin disorders? Uh, I haven't, I haven't any, had any clients with, with eczema. Um, uh, just like um, redness in the skin and stuff like that. Just like uh, general rash. Uh, we can do like moving cupping and stuff like that. That's about all I've seen though. I haven't, I haven't really done it on, uh, I've, ne- I've never done it on eczema. Uh, okay. And uh, now here's uh, a sister has a, has a situation. I used to do hijama regularly and I never fainted. As I, as I grow now and the last few times I did it, I would almost faint, you know, now that she's older and their brother would have to give me orange juice or some salt. My blood was thin and comes out quickly. I almost, I actually almost fainted before the cuts happened. What's your thought on why this is happening? Um, I'm honestly, I'm not sure. Um, uh, uh, Sometimes if you put too many cups on somebody, um, they can get dizzy. Sometimes if you put, put too much pressure on somebody. So the goal is to get as much pressure as possible, but, but maybe you need to try like lighter pressure, like maybe one pump. Don't do two or three or four. Uh, don't do so many. Maybe just do the two Sunda points. Take a break. So how, how I do when someone is brand new, they've never done it before. I have them come in. I do just the two Sunda points. And I saw, I see, how are you doing? I look at them, make sure they're okay. Um, and then I can, then I'll, you know, do their back pain or whatever. I'll do two or then maybe I'll add to four. I'll check on how they're doing and I'll, I'll add more, I'll add more pressure, I'll add more cups. The next time they come, I could put 20 cups on their back, 20, 25 cups on the back. It, 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 it's fine. But the, for the first time, if it's been a while, you haven't done it for a while, um, you know, try it slower, try maybe even don't even start with the wet cupping, just do dry cupping, try two dry cups. If you're okay with that, try four dry cups. If you're okay with that, try six, eight, whatever, do some moving cupping. All all the things will still benefit you. Not what to the same 2.0 is, is, is the wet cupping, but they'll all benefit you. When you start feeling comfortable with that, then you can maybe uh, um, try scratching again. And also make sure that they're not deep scratches. Um, it should be very, very superficial scratches. Deep scratches um, also can cause somebody to, to feel like they want to uh, faint. Okay, I, I will make this the last question. I know, uh, Brother Say, if you, you are at your clinic right now, and this is a busy day for you, and you have a client uh, uh, coming for a, an appointment, 
So we'll make this the last question. Uh, does, does hijama help with weight loss? Um, it, it can help with removing cellulite. But the thing is, weight loss, weight, weight loss is 100%, uh, uh, not 100%, I won't say 100%, but it, it, it's usually the case that it needs to be a change in the diet. And unfortunately, um, it's, it's the foods that we're, we're eating that are, 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 it could be a lack of exercise. So cupping can, so basically, um, cellulite looks like there's like, a, uh, like if you look at it in the mic microscope, there's like a circle and there's cellulite pushing through it. So when we do, I don't know if you can see that on the screen because I can't see my screen, but um, when we do uh, cupping, moving cupping, the pressure brings, brings that, looks like a string uh, of cellulite that comes out. And while we're moving the cup over that string of cellulite, uh, it, 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 it'll break that cellulite off. So you can do months and months of cellulite. It will take cellulite away. It'll take cellulite away. But if the, the diet is, if there's something in the diet that's affecting the body, if there's lack of exercise, unfortunately it's, it's those things, those changes that we, not, uh, uh, you can, you know, incorporate hijama with that, but it's, it's a, it's a full system. It's not because uh, if, if someone is, and I'm not suggesting that this is your situation at all, but if someone's not exercising and someone's not eating right and they just do hijama, you're, you're just, you're, you're taking something, uh, uh, you know, cellulite out, but it's just coming back because the, the, the other parts of our, of our life, ha, uh, lifestyle haven't changed. So, um, I, I, I think that's the best way I can answer that without knowing, you know, um, you know, diet and exercise and stuff like that. But usually, usually, unfortunately, when it comes to, to our weight, it's usually, it's, it's usually our diet that we have to fix. Okay. Hijama, uh, helps. Have... Hey, hijama helps, but those things are, are equally important, eating, eating the right foods. Alhamdulillah. So we do have uh, several more questions that have come in, but what we'll do, Brother Saif, uh, since, you know, uh, you, you are at the clinic, um, uh, we will send you those questions and maybe over the next several days, if you're able to get to them, that would be wonderful. We can convey those to everyone. We'll be sending the video out to everyone, all the registered uh, 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 attendees, and uh, we'll be posting it on our website as well. Uh, Brother Saif he practices hijama at his clinic in Columbia, Maryland at AuthenticCupping.com. That's uh, the website, AuthenticCupping.com. So we encourage you, if you're local in the area uh, and, and you would like to uh, explore first time or just get educated or, or, or consult with him, to visit him, mashallah. I myself got the cupping done for the first time with Brother Saif, and it was a very smooth experience. Uh, my wife, Aisha, also uh, had one of her her plantar fasciitis uh, problems, alhamdulillah, solved uh, just this year with Brother Saif. And that was a big blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'd like to thank him for the time that he gave us today. And we thank all of you for the patience that you showed in the delay that we had. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put this on the scale of uh, Saif's uh, hasanat on the day of judgment, inshallah. And to make this knowledge beneficial for all of us, inshallah. Uh, so that we may revive the sunnah, pay more attention to our health, and do it in the way that's legislated by our deen. And with that, we'll go ahead. And, Brother Safe, any last words for our attendees? Yeah, uh, give give credit to to my wife. My wife did the work with your wife. Uh, we have we have male for for male clients and female for female clients. So it was uh, she spent some time with Ala. Uh, she's also very uh, um, very good at hijama. Um, so alhamdulillah, thank you for, thank you for that. Zakallah khair. And with that, we'll end, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.